imagine you have a query compound, some little fragment, or in our case, we're going to use Prilosec, which in 2000 was the best selling drug in the world from AstraZeneca. And you have a database of molecules, for example, caffeine, which is my, my favorite. And what you're going to do is, in sequence, go through all of the database molecules and see if this thing pattern matches this. And if so, where? So the way that it works under the hood is you convert these objects to graphs. In this case, labeled graphs, which means vertices and edges that have numbers on them. And then you combine them in a specific way to build a, uh, a graph for which you have to find the maximum independent set. So this is getting back to the other. So there's a prescription for building the graph. And then if you can have a system that can find this maximum independent set property uh, by going into the route that I showed you earlier with the hardware accelerator, what happens is the, uh, the results of that calculation can be used to show the region of maximal overlap between them. The maximum independent set the 6B, 7A, 8C tells you where the two overlap and it provides you with the biggest area of overlap. And this is a, actually a very hard problem. Just qualitatively, to think of it like this, you have to take the query and slide it over the whole molecule kind of to look for these areas of overlap to find the best one. So if Dave uh, starts the uh, application now, I should tell you now, this is the first time ever in public quantum computers ever run something like this quasi-commercial application. And what's happening now is that every time one of these database molecules comes up, it's a graph is created with the query molecule like I showed you. It's sent to D-Wave. The maximum independent set of the graph is found. It's kicked back. And then the highlighted areas are the areas that the machine has found the maximum overlap from. So in the uh, right-hand column here, you see something which is a very nice feature of this type of approach in that you get ranked hits, you don't need exact matches. So this is actually extremely useful for practical purposes, especially if you are looking for some ideal in a database. It doesn't have to be molecules. It doesn't, it isn't there. It's a very complex structure that you're looking for something. This kind of application will rank the hits. So when you just finish searching through the database, uh, Dave pulls up. What you see are the top 12 matches ranked in order. And uh, the top three, you'll see, have very high rankings, whereas the others fall off. The reason I picked this example is that AstraZeneca, the company who marketed Prilosec in 2000, this drug was coming off patent in 2001. It's a very famous business case. Uh, AstraZeneca initiated a program which is called Operation Shark Fin, which is what their revenues were going to do, because this thing was coming off patent. <laughs> after many, many uh, months of uh, vetting, is they came up with a strategy where they took a mirror image of the Prilosec drug, an enantiomer, and they got patent protection on that. So these two molecules are structurally very similar. They're flipped about a certain axis, and then the exact same or very similar biological activity in the body. So there's two stories here. One is that in an application like this, the structure of the molecule is related to its function. The second story is that that particular point can be exploited in the business. And in this case, Nexium is now the third largest selling drug in the world. And AstraZeneca's revenues, if you look at them, just did this. So when that died off, this took over. The top four are all what are called proton pump inhibitors. As a category, they are all related. They have the same biological function. And by doing something like this, you can pull out the, uh, that some of the information that surrounds that. So something like this is a very useful tool for uh, uh, bioinformaticists and people who study on this. Now again, the caveat that this particular system running on a computer is not performant compared to the conventional approach. So if you wanted to do this on ChemQuery or something like that, and you were smart enough, you could blow this out of the water right now. But that's kind of my point, this is a systems proof concept. So the second thing we're going to